Welcome back, YouTube. Um, been a big day, actually. Been a couple big days. Uh, I want to give you a little update on what's going on with the channel. Uh, I've decided to move into um, adding merchandise that people can pick up. I'm actually kind of excited to pick some up myself. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second and uh, stick around. So it's actually been a really big week. Um, as people guessed correctly, uh, Rob Greenfield reached out and wanted to do a collaboration with me, which I think is really neat. Um, for those of you who maybe don't know who that guy is, uh, Rob is like an extreme guy. He's in, like, and you know that just meshes so well with me. I do everything in an extreme way. Even when uh, my wife and I started bowling, you know, I went out bought you know my own ball, my own shoes. I took lessons. I looked up videos on proper bowling techniques, and um, we haven't bowled in a long time, so I haven't really put that to practice but when I do something I go all out and I like as you guys probably know by looking at my channel and my food forest and how many trees I plant every year you know I go big I go all out 100% I like to learn everything about the way something works all that kind of stuff Rob is a guy like that uh, Rob's an activist he's an extreme minimal minimalist and he's gotten into permaculture lately he last year just did um, a whole year living off foraging and growing his own food 100%. He's done other things like wearing a month's worth of his own trash while living like an average American and then walking around uh, New York City. So here's this guy walking around New York City covered in garbage, in bags of garbage, just to showcase how wasteful um, our lives are that we're just accustomed to that's that's what normal looks like and and that that is not normal and it shouldn't be normal and we can we can change but we sh we need to want first we need to know and then we need to want to change so uh, I've looked up to this guy ever since I found out about him a couple years ago um, I'd already gotten into permaculture and all that um, and then when he started getting into permaculture it just it meshed so well with everything that he does. So him reaching out and wanting to do a collaboration with me, um, you know, he's just he's like the best of us. He's he's just a an amazing human being, and I'm really excited to work with him. On top of that, there's something on my channel that has always been there um, because I figured why not make it, um, and it's a Patreon link. So we actually got our first patron. And I want to give a shout out to Ben. I think it's amazing that you supported the channel. I'm very, very appreciated. I wanted to give you a shout out, a shout out and just let you know uh, how thankful I am that you did decide to go out of your way to give me some of your hard earned money. I think that's pretty awesome. I'm going to absolutely directly put it back into the food forest, all the money that I make um, doing this. It's not much, but I'm going to put it back into the food forest buy better recording gear hopefully one day um, but I just wanted to thank you I've had that patreon link up for ever since I started my channel but I've never mentioned it before because I really felt like I haven't earned anything yet um, I wanted to put out lots of videos get lots of good content out there for you guys so that um, you know if anyone did want to support the channel it comes from a place where I've earned it so I do want to thank you Ben awesome for you and I have another big announcement as well so just on the financial side of things for making videos for like my goal is actually to get you guys both planting food for us but then also go, go out there making your own content um, it's been a good solid year for me to even just get monetized um, and that's making a tons tons and tons of videos on the financial side of things I make around 80 cents to a dollar 20 per video and it takes me um, between, if I'm just doing a walk around video, maybe two hours, but if I'm doing an edited video, it can take me upwards of 10 hours or so to make that video um, in the editing and all that kind of stuff, uploading it with my country internet. Um, so it's not like I'm in this for the money. I haven't done merchandise uh, for that exact reason. I didn't want to show anything, but people have actually been contacting me and saying, 
if you had a t-shirt that said maximize photosynthesis on it i would buy it right away or a mug or you know a little backpack something like that even a journal for you know keeping track of your gardens and seed starts and stuff so I'd kind of put that off and put that off because I'm always busy planting trees and helping with the pond and doing the deck and all that kind of stuff today I finally decided you know what I've got my first patron I've got a collaboration coming up with uh, Rob Greenfield maybe I go and turn on and see if I look into how I set up a merch store so I did I spent all night last night doing that. It's actually a lot easier than I thought and it's already up and running. So check out the description in the video right now and as well on the description of my channel overall and I've got a link to the merch store where if you want to buy a t-shirt or a hoodie or a sweater uh, or a jean cap, a ball cap, a trucker cap, there's actually lots of stuff on there and um, I'm probably going to buy some. My wife is saying that we've got Christmas presents locked up because they're actually really nice um, and just so you know I get to kind of choose the prices on those things I drop that price as low as possible just just above the where I have to pay via P PayPal fees um, pay people to buy my stuff so it's as low as I can get it because I just want people to be able to go out and if they want to buy something with my name on it um, the channel logo then they can support that and then they also can kind of, you know, if you're going to buy a hat anyway, it's kind of cool. I would like to kind of support some of the uh, YouTubers that I love and that inspired me to start this. Uh, and again, my goal is actually to inspire you guys to start. So if you do want to buy any merch, there's a link below. Don't feel obligated whatsoever. I put it off for a year because I don't want to be that sellout person with clickbaity titles and buy my merch and all this kind of stuff. But, um, you know, if the demand's out there, I'm stupid to not try to at least satisfy it and give you guys an option to, you know, wear a Canadian permaculture logo on your hat or something. So anyways, uh, it's kind of been an exciting week and uh, let's get right to the video today. So with all those announcements, this one's already gone a bit long. I'm just actually going to maybe go around and show some updates. I have a bunch of future video ideas from uh, commenters. And while we're on that, I just want to thank you guys. My comment section has been blowing up. It's actually really hard for me to keep up with it. Um, but that's a good problem to have, and I love it. So I love when you guys ask me questions. I love giving out free consultation. I know a lot of YouTubers don't do that. They'll charge for consultation. If you guys have a question about your food forest setup, hit me up in the comments. As long as I can actually have enough hours in the day to help you guys out, that's why I made this YouTube channel. So I love getting your comments. Um, for the rest of the video, I'm just going to show you some quick little updates. And then in the future, I'm going to do a video on, um, I, I'm planning to do a video on when you're starting from a blank slate, blank, blank, blank. What do you look at? Um, I want to do a video on how I manage poison ivy. These are great comments that I've received in, a little, in the last while. And I want to make sure that I answer those questions for you guys in a video. For now, I'm just going to go around and show you some quick updates because stuff's exploding here. Um, like we've got a ton and ton and ton of growth on a whole bunch of different stuff. And I want to show you how quickly things can scale up when it starts getting warm outside. Okay, so first things first, I had a comment from a long-term subscriber um, with me since, you know, the very beginning days that I should leave some comfrey up and let it go to flower. And I did want to show you guys 100%. I agree with that so much. The other day I mentioned that not a lot of things were flowered. Um, there's tons of stuff flowering here. It's just there can always be more. I don't like looking at something and there's an area that's not flowering. Um, but there is absolutely tons and tons of comfrey that I do leave up and it's flowering. All right. And then let's look at this Jerusalem artichoke bed. I had a video on if there's one crop you should grow, it should be Jerusalem artichokes. If you can and it's in your zone and this bed is already booming. Um, if you've seen this bed in future vid er, in previous videos, even two weeks ago, these things were just poking out of the ground. And a couple days, like it's been pretty cold. It's been 67, 65 Fahrenheit, um, you know, 20 Celsius or so for a bunch of days it just started to get a little warm and the Jerusalem artichokes are popping up the raspberries and the hazelnut edge um, are is absolutely exploding I can actually barely walk through there 
it's going to start becoming a problem on hard, how to harvest all this stuff. And let's talk about that. I, over the years making videos, I've come up with a couple sayings that are, are kind of like, I, I don't know, I haven't heard them anywhere else. They're nothing new, um, but they really try to, I'm trying to capture the main goals for how you take a garden to the next level. Um, one of them is definitely maximize photosynthesis. And then like say the another one is grow soil and not plants. Those two things I think are so important for us to, um, to internalize and use in all of our decisions that we make in our gardens. The maximize photosynthesis thing, when you design and you cram stuff in in 3D, it's a trade-off between maximizing productivity and maximizing how much energy your system is pulling in from the sun. And, um, you know, because the system can only grow at, at however much energy it has access to. But the trade-off to that is definitely that when you cram stuff full, it's hard to harvest. So I'm actually getting to that point now myself where some of my food forests that I did in the early days are getting so well established now and so strong that it's kind of a little scary. Like I know if I disappeared, these things would just turn into a jungle, a total jungle. How am I gonna be able to harvest those things in the future? It's gonna be a little hard. I'm gonna have to thin some stuff out probably at some point. Um, but you know, that raspberry and hazelnut patch is a great example. When you start cramming stuff in and you're collecting that, that much photosynthesis, stuff just grows like crazy. So it's gonna be tough to harvest all that stuff. I might have to thin some of it out. Now I'm always showing you guys trees and bushes and all the green stuff. But one of the most important things in a garden is happening in the ground and that's the fungus. So one thing that's really been exploding lately for me is my King Strephoria wine cap mushrooms. These are the teeth that chew apart the wood and rebuild the forest. A forest grows on a fallen forest is a popular saying. And these wine cap King Strephoria mushrooms, when you can combine that with an edible crop, that's just awesome. Even if you don't eat them though, you wanna have saprophytic mushrooms breaking apart lignans and wood because the carbon in those lignans and wood there's so much tremendous energy from the sun stored in that so when you bring wood chips into your system you're bringing in decades worth of solar energy stored in carbon bonds and it's the mushrooms that release that back to the plants so my wine cap mushrooms are exploding with a little bit of a rainy day uh, a couple days ago and they're popping up everywhere I've been spreading them over the last couple years and it's really paid off. So here it is right at the front of this food forest, right in the heart of my zone zero, zone one, and you can see that these things are just everywhere. And you can spread these either by digging into the actual mycelium network underground, that's that hair, my oh, here's a perfect example. It's that hair network underground these mushrooms are actually just a fruiting medium. They're like the fruit on a fruit, fruit tree. But if you want to spread the mushrooms, you're spreading the roots. You're spreading that mycelial network. Or the seeds are basically the spores that come out. So I can take some of these and I try not to damage the actual mycelium network. And I can either eat them or if I want to look to the future, I spread them and I've spread them everywhere. I've spread them in here. And did I eat these ones yet? I can't remember. Yes, I did. But I'm getting mushrooms popping up in some of the areas that I have spread them before in. And it's super exciting. Like we have them popping up everywhere. And it's just so amazing. Like the whole photocopying food thing just blows my mind. I've already spread a couple in here. I'm looking for areas that have decent sun exposure because wine caps actually do want a little bit of sun, believe it or not. Um, but somewhere that will get shade and I basically just plant them, bury them and cover them back over. And that's it. So now I'm spreading those out all into this swale here. Should be a really nice place that gets decent shade. 
and uh, the more free mushrooms I can get going, you know, that action just took me three seconds to do, 30 seconds to do, and if I do that multiple times per year, by the time I retire, I'm going to have mushrooms popping up all over the place, and those are actually a valuable food crop if I ever wanted to have some kind of gig where I'm selling food in my retirement. So this is where I just dug some of those mushrooms up uh, here, and it's quite far away. And when I put when you put wood chips in, there's going to be saprophytes from some kind of mushroom in there. So I get these little white ones, skinny little white upside down umbrellas, and they're not edible, but they're not poisonous, so I don't mind. Um, they're useful. They're still breaking apart the nutrients, um, but they're not wine cap. So I thought the wine cap would be contained to the area that they dominate in based on, you know, putting in a very healthy culture at the beginning. But what I did notice yesterday is I've been, I always add a little bit of wood chips every year to the garden. And when I put these rocks in, I wanted to get them down in the ground a bit. I didn't want to dig too much near this peach tree because I don't want to damage the roots. So I'd like to go a little further down than that to kind of naturalize it more. But um, I got to make a compromise between not destroying the peach tree. Um, and when I dug into this, I just had such a thick mat. Maybe I'll dig up a little more. I don't want to damage some of these peach seedlings. See, I, I plant all my seeds everywhere, always. Um, I'll just dig a little bit in and I'll show you. It is just this thick white mat of mycelium. So it has come all the way over into this area. Um, you know what? I might as well propagate that now at this point. And it's come all the way. So that means it's, you know, coming from there all the way across and really, really spreading out. So what I've started to do now is, well, we know that this soil is dead um, because it's basically just sand that I dug the pond out with. Um, and I've been inoculating life into it. Well, mushroom is life. And we should be inoculating some of this with the wine cap as well. So we're going to bury some of this mycelium. And now right around my wetland filter, after rains, maybe it'll take a year, it might take two, but I should start to get some wine cap mushrooms and edibles around my uh, wetland filter. There's a lot of wood chips here for it to eat and I want it to spread everywhere. Free food. also wanted to just confirm, yes, this is valerian. Thanks for the comment. I had said that it's lovage. Lovage has very similar leaves um, to this. And I planted lovage here, but I also planted valerian. And a uh, commenter, very thankfully, thank thankful for all your comments, said, hey, is that valerian? It is valerian, which is good because I thought the valerian that I planted here died. So it totally regrew. So let's talk about that. So often when you start fresh, and I had another comment on this about starting fresh and they planted a whole bunch of stuff and it didn't look like any of it's grown. You'd be surprised. You plant something and immediately um, the plant goes through shock. So we damage the roots when we take it out of, a, um, out of a pot. We are burying it in. It's got some circling roots. It's not that strong. Often a plant uh, grows a little too fast in a pot compared to its root size. So when it goes in the ground and it has access to all this nice soil, sometimes the plant actually struggles a bit and a tree might drop its leaves. Like this apple tree right here, when I planted it, where is it? Hard to see, right there. This apple tree right here, when I planted that, that thing dropped every single leaf on the tree and I pruned it. This is why I sometimes prune when I plant a tree because I know there's gonna be some root disturbance and damage and I need to balance the tree out a little bit because um, roots and trees, they kind of match. Remember I always say that a tree will kind of match how much root uh, mass it has. It'll equate the two of them. So if you damage and cut off a root, especially if it's high up in the root system and that root would then travel to be a, like there's a long root in that um, circling around the pot that got severed, um, you cut maybe a lot of root mass off. When you put the tree in the ground, the tree is going to balance itself right away. And it does that by dropping leaves. It's the fastest way for it to balance that off. So um, often when we plant a plant, especially green leafy plants, they look 
disgusting and dead and tired and awful when we plant them. Sometimes we even think they died, but the roots didn't die, and that's the important thing. So that valerian was dead as a doornail for two years, and now it's exploding. So if you plant some stuff in brand new land, don't be afraid if it doesn't do well right off the get-go. It will probably recover as long as you've given it good mulch, as long as um, you didn't just say mulch right on top of grass and there's no nutrient there. You know, follow that guide, put compost down, give it some food for a little while until the mushrooms break into the wood chips and start making some of that nutrient bioavailable. Um, give it a little bit of food like that at first, but as long as you do that and you don't bury it, um, you don't um, drown it constantly by overwatering it all the time, uh, the tree will do just fine. And as long as you don't completely neglect it by never watering it, right? You just, you want to give it a decent amount of water, check the soil, make sure it stays moist all the time. That's kind of what you want. If the plant dies, don't give up on it because it could pop back up. The roots could be alive. I really have to end this one here because it's getting too long. It was long with the intro already, so sorry about that. I did want to get that all that news out to everybody. Um, I don't know how other YouTubers run out of content. I feel like I could make 100 videos a day and just talk about the garden. Um, maybe it's just like I just have such a deep passion for this stuff. And it's weird because I never did before. Um, you know, like I was an inside guy, never really. Like I liked going outside and hiking, but there's just something so cool about um, planting trees and bushes and flowers and then watching the strength of the system take hold and watch, you know, a tree will grow, but then everything around it starts locking in and you can feel, like you can sense your food forest is to the point where it's unstoppable. Um, it's just really incredible what happens when all those little subcomponents start integrating together, locking together, and um, it's, it's honestly humbling how fast stuff will grow when it's done right. So anyways, I'm going to leave it now. I'll do uh, more videos in the future. I kind of feel like I could upload a 40 minute video every day, but I have to keep them around 10 at 20 minutes pushing it. Um, especially with my country internet sucks so bad it takes me like a full nine hours to upload a, a 20 minute video so i have to do you know what it takes uh, how long it'll take it to upload overnight while i'm sleeping or else i crush the internet for the kids and i actually work from home so i need the internet as well so that's it for today thanks for watching remember one thing though that the game that we're playing when we're building a permaculture food forest, a regenerative food forest, it's the long game. Okay, we're playing this slow building snowball where every year our soils and lands get stronger and stronger and stronger. Absolutely, if you start a brand new garden and you wanna get it going right away and you go and you till and you put fertilizers in and you bring in all this awesome compost, your garden's gonna be amazing, amazing. There's no reason why um, you can't start it that way, but a lot of people stay that way forever. And, you know, maybe not the fertilizers, but you know, whatever. People, like some people wanna get that instant result right away and it will happen. But remember, it's when we do these systematic inputs and we tell nature that I'm the fertilizer or we tell nature that I'm the predator, and we add these inputs in, we set up a system where you need to keep it going perpetually. Because if I fertilize my tomatoes, it's one thing, it's an annual. If I fertilize my fruit trees, that fruit tree says, you know, capillary action will bring the nutrients up into the roots of that tree. And that tree says, well, I don't need to grow deep roots because I'm getting more nutrients than I need actually. I'm actually maybe even shedding some roots because I'm getting too much nutrient. So then when we stop doing that action, whether or not it's just because we're fertilizing every week and the tree has been used to, um, you know, a little more fertilizer and it's got root systems that totally suck and it can't feed itself. The, the minute we, we miss that one fertilizer, our tree starts dying. And then we get that feedback of, I need to fertilize my trees or they all die. How does anyone make this work? How does nature grow stuff? It's just so, it's all so hard. I have a brown thumb, I kill everything, right? It's this, it's a system of inputs that we create. On the other hand, when we plant a tree and we water it deeply and we make those roots chase deep down into the soils to get the nutrient, when we make 
nutrient-rich soils instead of nutrient-rich planting areas. And the trees have to go out and find their nutrients. When they don't get water for a while, they have these huge complex root systems that can go access nutrients, they can feed themselves. And again, if you got a bigger root system, you got a bigger tree. If you're getting more nutrients, especially in a balanced way, then you're building healthy cellulose walls in your, in your plants and pests aren't getting at you. There's a bird right there. Just landed three inches from me. So I'm rambling again. I gotta go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next time. Check out the merch store if you want. Get excited for the um, collaboration with Rob. It's gonna be super fun. And um, thank you, Ben, for being a Patreon. Also, randomly, last night, I got a whole bunch of subscribers from Africa. <laughs> so I, thanks for watching from Africa. That's really cool. What happened was one of my videos started hitting people's live, um, you know, their random feeds and people were seeing uh, videos on edging the garden. Or, no, sorry, you know what, it was the one on the um, things I would do differently. The, uh, the one where I was talking about the wood path, how I, I like living paths now. So that video all of a sudden got like 2,000 subs overnight, like at like 2 in the morning. So that's really exciting to me because that means that my channel is actually growing and that there's enough feedback in your comments and my replies and the engagement score on when you guys see I upload a video I've got a core of subscribers that actually will watch a lot of my videos um, which is really really good and it's good for the channel because that means that now my channel is being advertised to other people who just might like gardening they might watch other gardening channels and now they're seeing a permaculture gardening channel so that's super, super exciting. Um, once your videos start hitting mainstream uh, people like that, I can really start influencing other people and the way that we grow food. So that is so exciting to me. I'm just really thankful that it's happening and that there's people out there who are um, so into a, garden, a, a gardening channel, a, a channel just about growing food in a sustainable way. I think um, with everything that's going on in the world right now, uh, we need a little bit of that. So thanks for being part of this. Um, and please spread the word and get more people into this. And most importantly, don't just watch my channels. Take action and start doing stuff in your own life. Because it's a nice life going out get free food from your front lawn. And know that there's nothing on that. Um, there's no insecticides. I'm not crashing insect populations on a critical species that we depend on for our very survival. Um, it's not soaked in herbicides. I'm not creating super weeds. I'm not eroding soils. Um, and there's no carbon. Like how much carbon is on these has caps? None. So if, imagine if everyone did that all across the world. Um, the amount of tons of carbons, gigatons of carbons that we would save uh, from going out into the atmosphere. And then not only that, but sequestering it back in the soil from all those solar panels. I would also like to go back to Poppy's this weekend and we'll do an update video on Poppy's place. Um, so hopefully we can make that happen. Stay tuned for that. I would like to go to my sister's place. They have bought a ton of ornamental plants. And I thought, you know what, this is a permaculture channel, but there's a lot of gardeners out there who do love their ornamentals. There's nothing wrong with ornamentals. I like decentralizing that food chain, um, but ornamental plants are better than grass. And sometimes you just want to look at some really nice ornamental plants. They have really nice gardens there. It might be a really nice video actually to go see them talk about all the different types of hostas and stuff that they have. And hostas are actually fully edible as well. I think there are some varieties that you can't, so just be careful with that. Double check, as always, I'm not telling you to eat anything, um, but I, a, many hostas are fully edible. And then I would like to go to my sister-in-law's house. Um, you know, they're all family, um, but I would like to show you guys uh, her garden setup. She's more of a traditional gardener, um, lots and lots of annuals, but she's gone really big this year and it's super exciting. So uh, she's gotten really into um, starting all of her own 
plants from seed and she's got a bunch of really cool varieties that she's looking to try out. So I'd like to do a video on her place as well. And then my real dream, I actually, I think this would be really cool, would be if I did a series where I actually traveled around my general area. I've got a Tesla, so it's kind of low carbon way to travel around um, using uh, electric vehicles that is charged from a green nuclear heavy grid. So um, I can kind of travel around the area and I'd love to be able to go to permaculture setups around me and do little mini videos, kind of like a Canadian food forest tour and show you guys all the other wonderful things that people around me are doing um, that maybe even like that would be fun for me because um, I don't really know that many people who are doing this kind of stuff so to go out and investigate that would be super fun it would be very time consuming and I work a full-time job so at some point I'd like to do it I don't know how I'm gonna make it work but I would really love to be able to do that and I think that would be a cool video series as well